สวัสดีครับสวัสดีแขกผู้มีเกียรติทุกท่านนะครับที่รับชมอยู่หน้าจอช่อง8ณขณะนี้นะครับรวมถึงทุกท่านที่รับชมผ่านทางไลฟ์สดช่องทาง YouTube ของ Thai f i Official ด้วยนะครับผมแดนนี่ Blessing นะครับขอต้อนรับทุกท่านเข้าสู่ Beat Active b y t e c h บุรีกับการแข่งขันชกมวยค่าเชือกและนี่คือ Thai f i l e a g u สังเวียนเลือดของตัวจริงถ้าพร้อมแล้วมาเริ่มกันที่นักมวย White Corner She's from France Please welcome the French cyborg Cindy Silvers และสำหรับนักมวย Black Corner ชีสฟรอมอำเภอแม่วงจังหวัดนครสวรรค์ Please welcome ทิดาจอมโหดพยาสิงสอสมมิตรWe are back here on Thai Fight League. Welcome to everyone watching around the world on the Thai Fight International YouTube channel. Yep, you might have just noticed that the MC is away this evening, so we thank you, give thanks, should I say, to Daniel Blessing for uh, standing in his place, and we hope Coach Jib gets better and returns next week. In the meantime, we have got seven action-packed Muay Thai card chirk fights coming your way this evening, and. Of course, we're going to continue with the Thai Fight League tournament, or should I say the Thailand Isuzu Cup Championship tournament. This week, it will be the South taking on Lower Isan. I am Aaron Suri Sompan, and joining me, as always, is... Chai Grit Amlin, also known as Kevin. So to kick things off today, we have got the ladies. It's almost like a sort of a throwback. We haven't had the ladies kicking off a Thai Fight League in quite some time, and we've got... Now a Thai Fight League regular in the black corner. However, introducing first in the white corner, we have got Cindy Sylvestre, otherwise known as the French Cyborg. 31 years of age from Besancon in France. She stands at 158 centimeters and has a professional record of 101 fights, 65 victories, 35 losses, and one draw, former WMO world champion at 54 and 57 kilograms and now introducing her opponent fighting out of the black corner she goes by the name of Paya Singh Saw Summit her real name is Akrani Getsin 26 years of age 157 centimeters tall from Nakhon Sawan province she has a total of 72 fights 59 victories 8 losses and 5 draws so Paya Singh You'll have seen here on Thai Fight League a few times, of course, she's competed against Vero a couple of times, against Pancake as well. She's familiar with those ropes. They can see the tail of the tape for this one. Cindy slightly older than a pious thing. Similar height, more experience for Cindy. We have to say, percentage-wise, better win percentage for pious thing. Yeah, and of course, we've seen Cindy a couple of times all in around Thailand. She's oh, competed absolutely. in the Bangkok stadiums for a very long time now, and as you said, even is a WMO world champion. Yeah, and uh, I think even a few people on the chat have already said that they've seen Cindy on other promotions. She's a very game fighter. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago she was at Lumpini Stadium. I was about to say the same thing about Rajat Amnon as well. <laughs> <laughs> and the referee in charge is referee Patanan Pong Sapan. Judges at ringside, Pukit Pram Prayun, Arun Kumutachat, and Yong Yot Apaiso. And of course, the president of the judges and referees here in Thai Fight is 
Dr. Sawang Wutiapitak, who was the only judge that you could actually speak English with. <laughs> Good point. So, yeah, we return after last week's big Thai fight. And return to Thai Fight League action right now with the opening bout of the evening in the white corner from France, Cindy Sylvestre. And in the black corner, it is Payasing Saw Summit. The only international card we have for tonight. Absolutely. And the only woman's contest we have tonight as well. Yeah, international bout right now at 54 kilograms. Thailand taking on France. I don't think Cindy has taken on Vero just yet. Cindy hasn't, no. no I didn't think so either. So maybe if she does get the win over Paya Singh here tonight. Could be a chance of that happening. That's a good point, that. Good jab there from Cindy. And a teep there from Cindy. But a huge kick in return by Paya Singh. Paya Singh going in with a big shot already. Oh, both fighters looking for that left hook, but I think that it was Paya Singh who got the better of the two. Yeah, so to look for, so to look out for is Cindy. Sometimes she engages in the clinch, not enough in my opinion, but when she does, she's got strong knees, and she is strong as well in her stature. Both fighters actually very stocky. Yeah, I was about to say, they're both actually quite similar <laughs> in styles. <laughs> Absolutely. But as the match goes on, we'll find out who is the better brawler. And now Cindy has gone into the clinch and a good side knee there from Cindy Sylvester. Nice low kick from Cindy. And a return by Paya Singh, this time to the body. I'm just looking through my notes, and this is actually a rematch. So you were talking about how the MC used to, used to host uh, Moi Hardcore. Well, that, these two girls correct. actually fought on Moi Hardcore in 2021, where Paya Singh got a decision victory. Oh, wow. And that was at the bazaar. Oh, big right high kick there from Paya Singh. Yeah, Paya Singh slowly starting to assert her dominance. Able to hit the target straight to the body a couple of times now. Yeah, she's performing a lot better here in round number one than Cindy, in my opinion, so far anyway. Yeah, I have to think so as well. I mean, as we said, they do have similar styles. But at the same time, it seems like Paya Singh is the harder hit hitter. So Cindy might have to be the one to adjust in the second round. Stay with us. Round two, up next here on Thai Fight League. See highlights of round number one. Piercing almost in cruise control in round number one, in my opinion. She was throwing the uh, more accurate shots and the more harder shots, I must I say, agree. as well. Yeah, she looks a little bit quicker, I'm being honest. But you know what they say, Aaron? They say no matter what hair you. how you dye your hair, eventually it will turn red. <laughs> Who says that? A couple of people I've met quote, around. That quote of Kevin Armley. <laughs> Whatever color you dye your hair, it will turn red. That's beautiful, Kevin. So let's have a look if that is the case here tonight. <laughs> the good kick there and a good teep from Piasing, who has really turned it up already in the second round. Cindy trying to do the same at the moment as her opponents at the ropes, but receives a knee to the midsection. Two knees on top of that. Cindy's actually fought on Thai Fight, the big show before, in 2021, the same year that she lost to Pai Singh, where she fought Pet Ji Oh, big right high kick there from 
Kwasi looks like she's enjoying herself in there tonight. Cindy hasn't really got going, to be honest. Yeah, not just said that I mean she tried, but once she got into the oh. clinch, she received two big knees. Good shot to the body there from Paya Singh. Trying to dig that left hook into the body. And almost kicking the referee on top of that. Oh, right hand, Cindy now. Yeah, quite honestly, the last fight I saw Cindy in, the one at Lumpini, that is, I'm not sure if she fought at Lumpini or Rajadon last, but the last fight I saw her, her in, she actually looked really good. Oh, credit to Paisu, because I agree. Cindy is a good fight, but Paisu is doing really well in this fight. But Cindy's starting to just show a little bit of dominance now. Gonna start the round off very quickly, but good left jab there by Cindy. Yeah, I would like to say that the cut shirt that's wrapped around Paya Singh's hand is making the big difference, yeah. but really the shots that are scoring the most are the kicks and the knees that are coming in from Paya Singh. Good knee position there for Cindy. Yeah, she's looking strong, and I think there's a big welt on the forehead of Paya Singh. Oh, yes, there is. I'm gonna assume that, it's gonna, that it has come from the elbows. Oh. Good elbow there from Paisic, but she leaves herself exposed. Now she's going to the body of Sydney. Oh, big right hand there from Paisic. Sydney looking a little bit worse for wear there after that big right hand. And oh, round number two. Number two, Paising, she started well in that second round and all of a sudden, Cindy just started to find a way to compete against Paising. You can see that well on the top of the forehead of the Thai fighter. But right at the end of the round, that was that huge right hand. I mean, that's, uh, that wiped the smile off Cindy's face immediately. Excited to see what happens here in this third round. I mean, it was close. Yeah, very close. But I still think Paisley might be two rounds up right now. That could definitely be the case. All right, well, let's see what happens here in the third and final round of the only female fight of this evening's Thai Fight League. So you're saying it's break it or make it for Cindy? I, I believe so. But hey. I'm always wrong. <laughs> right looking there from Cindy. Tempting push kick. Now Cindy going for broke. Right exactly. kick to the midsection there. Exactly what Cindy needs to do. And again, going downstairs to the legs of Piercy. And putting a lot more combinations together now, Cindy. Going in for the clinch and seems to have a good advantage here. Another good knee connects. Three knees in a row. Piercy oh. in a lot of trouble at the moment. I'm telling you, Cindy's got very good clinch technique. But she doesn't use it enough. And now right at the end of the third round, she might be too tired to implement it, unfortunately for her. Tempted elbow there by Cindy, covering up here from Piercing, who looks fresh. She needs to throw that left knee. It's a little bit too late. Get into it herself into a great position within that clinch, but just not throwing that knee. Oh, another body shot. Right hand there from Sydney, and again. And this girl's it. going to war in round number three here, Kevin. And also there's an elbow connected from Sydney as well to counter the hand from Piercing. Cindy actually doing a really good job in this third round. Oh, another big right hand there from Piercing. Elbow there from Sydney. Left elbow from Piercing. What a war, what a scrap. Yeah, this has really become a war in this third round. Back and forth action. 
Good kick to the body there from Pia Singh and a return by Cindy. Oh, another left jab there from Sydney. Well timed jab from Cindy and another jab and a right kick on top of that. Here comes Pia Singh. Still the aggressor, still the one who's pushing forward. Another good right hand there from Pia Singh. I mean, Cindy is doing a good job in this round as she is connecting with the better shots. But, of course, the judges here on Thai Fight, do they prefer the more aggressive fighter? That is the question. Oh, good right high kick, left kick to the midsection by Cindy. See, the corner of Cindy are really, really happy with what they've witnessed in this third round. But he's still gesturing for her to go with some more kicks in the body. But there it is. Both fighters raise their hands. Both think they've done enough to win the fight. I mean, it, based on that second round, I said it was very close. It looks like Cindy's the happier of the two fighters, Kevin. Yeah, it seemed that way. I mean, she did finish the stronger, in my personal opinion. Gone to Paya Singh, but we'll have to see the judges' scorecard. Hey, you can see highlights from round number three. Some big moments in that round for both fighters. Paya Singh, yeah, targeting the body with that right hand. Also finding the head on numerous occasions, but big elbows. by Cindy, they were fighting in such close range, fighting in a full move, as they say, for the majority of that fight. ท่านผู้วิเคราะห์ครับมาสนุกกันต่อนะครับกับซุปเปอร์ไฟท์มวยชายในพิกัดน้ําหนักและสำหรับนักมวย Black Corner He's from อำเภอชะอวด จังหวัดนครศรีธรรมราช Please welcome จอมบูสีวิชัยชะอวดเล็ก Family Muay Thai Moving on, swiftly moving on to our second bout of the evening here on Thai Fight League. And it will be a super fight at 65 kilograms. So from here on out, every fight will be Thailand taking on Thailand. And you'd imagine one of these two could be replacement fighters for the Zusu Thailand Championship. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So it, it means a lot for these fighters. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Thai Fight League. I am Aaron Sarit Sompan, and joining me is... Chai Crit Amlin. And we'll be taking you through seven action-packed bouts here on Thai Fight League this evening. And let's not forget, like Kevin said, you can see the uh, truck behind us. The Thailand Isuzu Championship will be continuing, where today we've got the South taking on Lower Isan. Introducing first in the white corner, we have got Mong Kon Pet, so Jit Sanong Chat. 21 years of age from Sakyao province here in Thailand. Standing at 172 centimeters, he has a professional record of 35 fights, 24 victories, 6 losses, and 5 draws. And now introducing the fighter in the black corner, he goes by the name of Chat Watlek, family Muay Thai. His real name is Ramapum Kongklap. 
22 years of age, 168 centimeters tall from the Khan C. Tamarat province. There's a total of 70 fights, 55 victories, and 15 losses. Ever been to Sagao province? Driven past there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's as good as being in it, I guess. There you can see the tail of the tape for this one. But yeah, we've got one fighter from the south, another one from the east. So it could be good replacement fighters. We'll have a, see, have a look here. Well, yeah, of course we, we said, didn't we? If there is knockouts, then it could be a potential for fighters to actually enter the tournament. That's right. And the referee in charge is to one Ying Ubon. Judges ringside. Parnans Pong Sapan. Yong Yot, Pai So, and Pukit Pramprayon. Yeah, for people watching around the world, family Muay Thai. Yep, Lion trains out of that gym. What an unbelievable boy he had last week for all those who haven't seen it. Yeah, it was unbelievably close, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. There's a lot of people still debating on who won that, and believe me, I see both sides. Yeah, controversial. But like you said, what a quick start here. This is unbelievable. Yeah, already. Mon Pet going straight after. Yeah, Mon Con Pet trying to make a name for himself on Thai Fight League early on. He wanted the fast knockout. We're all for it as well. Oh, big right hand. And down goes Cha Oblek. Wow, what a start this is. He comes up immediately. He gets the counter punch. And now Mon Con Pet just urging his opponent on. I love what I'm seeing from Mon Con Pet right now. I'm not going to lie. Same. Right low kick there from Mon Compet. You can see that Chao like is just trying to weather the storm right now. The question is, look at Mon Compet. Has he tied himself out? I think he has. He might have had an adrenaline dump. But here he comes again. Good left hook there from Chao Oblek. Not overrun, not intimidated at all. You know, someone told me that there's a lot of Burmese fighters uh, competing at a such Sedong Chat at the moment. So I think that's where he gets his style from. <laughs> Probably. Go and see. You know what you've got to love about Mon Compet though. This is the first time we saw him. Oh! And it might be the last big left hand there from Chao Lek and down he goes. What I was about to say is people are going to either love his style or hate his style. That's right. That is correct. And at the moment, I'm not sure he's liking his own style too much. Oh! Going for a flying team. Don't think I've seen that. Another left hook there. Once again. This is a big problem here for Monko, but I feel like he's gonna need he, gonna, he needs the bell right now to save himself. Oh, again, he keeps walking into that left door, got a right hand, and he's down for the second time. And this could be it after all that bravado. I think he's taken out his uh, mouth guard as well. The mouth guard is on the floor just to buy himself some extra time. Cheeky. Very cheeky, and he knew exactly what he was doing. But, but yes, one more knockdown, and that will be it. If the referee saw that, he would take a point away. Like I said, smart, but naughty. Right low kick. Surely, oh, like now he's going to try and finish the fight, and that's it. Three knockdowns in a round. And now he can take out his mouth guard. <laughs> what a victory from Chat Odlek. I mean, Mon Compet, he wanted to be Rotang, but unfortunately for him, it was not to be here tonight. It really wasn't to be, but it is Sha Odlek's night. And he's left not only with egg on his face, but a little bit of rope as well. What a fight from Sha Odlek. Like I said, he did not care about Mon Compet. In fact, I think it spurred him into action. Gotta say that was really... Storm early on. Let's have a look at the highlights there. I mean, Mon Compet, he started like house on fire and then all of a sudden he got caught with a couple of left hooks, which he was susceptible to all throughout that round. He finally caught him there, that initial knockdown, and then another, and then a third, and that was all she wrote. What a right hand that was. Welcome! It's a tie fight league, boys and girls, where anything can and does happen. Stay with us. Third bout up next here on tie fight league. The win.
winner by technical knockout is Black Corner. Shout out Leg Family Muay Thai. เอาละครับกลับมาสู่ความมันความดุเดือดกันต่อนะครับกับไทยไฟลีกนะครับสังเวียนเลือดของตัวจริงแน่นอนครับเรากลับมาเดือดกันต่อคู่นี้จะเป็นคู่ที่3แล้วนะครับกับซูเปอร์ไฟมวยชายในพิกัดน้ำหนัก73กิโลกรัมสำหรับนักมวย White Corner he is from อำเภอปทุมรัฐจังหวัดร้อยเอ็ด please welcome คุณเขาดอกบัวแดงกองปทุมวอวันนิมิตสำหรับนักมวย Black Corner He's from อำเภอชำนิจังหวัดบุรีรัมย์ Please welcome จอมเดือดเมืองชำนิทวีชัยสอประสบโชคเราเริ่มกันที่ our third bout of the evening here on Thai Fight League. This time, it is a super fight at 73 kilograms. Which, as I look down, my bout sheet is indeed the joint heaviest fight of the evening. That's right. The next heavy, as heavy fight, I suppose, will be coming up next after this one. There you can see the live band here in Thai Fight League. If you are ever in Bangkok, Thailand, come and join us. There you can see in the white corner, Kong Patom for Wan Nimit, 25 years of age from Royet Province here in Thailand, standing at 188 centimeters tall. Professional record of 140 fights, 98 victories. Wow, 36 losses with six draws. And here's his opponent fighting out of the black corner. He goes by the name of t o w i Chai s o p r a s o p c h o k His real name is Chanon j a n n o p a t u n 27 years of age, 177 meters tall, from Buram Province in the, in the northeastern region of Thailand. He has a total of 82 fights, 50 victories, 30 losses, and two draws. And there you can see the tail of the tape for this matchup. Of course, what stands out immediately is the height difference. I was about 18. to say the I was about to say the soft power of t o w i Chai, <laughs> but there you can see 18 centimeter high advantage for Kong p a t o m and also but in the defense of t o w i Chai, much stronger mustache. Oh yes. Speaking of mustaches, let's not forget that later on tonight, a Thai Fight League fan favorite Kitty Sack will be competing here tonight. I thought you were about to announce that you're about to grow a mustache as well. <laughs> I definitely don't want to do that. Oh, do I? Tell you what, if we reach 50,000 subscribers, Kevin a r m l i d will grow his mustache. No, don't bring me into <laughs> this. <laughs> We're very close, by I'll, the way. I'll get a scolding once I get home. Now you see the referee in charge. It's Arun k a m u t a c h a t Judges ringside, Tuan i n g o b o n Pukit p r a m p r a y u t and Patanan p o n g s a p a n All right, so if you are just joining us, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are around 47,000 subscribers. Once again, we give thanks to everyone who uh, writes all the comments. Believe it or not, we do read them all. And uh, hit the like button; it helps the algorithm or something. So, introducing the fighters in the third bout of the evening here tonight: Kong Patom for Wan Nimit in the white corner, and in the black corner, it is t o w i Chai s o p r a s o p c h o k 73 kilograms. So there is someone in the chat. So, oh, it reminds me of Diesel Noy. Well, 
Diesel Noy was around the same height, or is around the same height, should I say, but he didn't compete at 73 kilograms. Believe it or not, he competed at 61.5 kilograms, 135 pounds. Yeah, that's just unbelievable. <laughs> Ridiculous, isn't it? Nabil-esque. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Nabil oh. also competes at 135 pounds. Can he still make that, do you think? Yes. Slightly off topic, let's get back to the facts. <laughs> I'm interested to see how Compatum can do here. Got yeah, and as we expected, the knees come in early already from Compatum. Oh, big right hand there from Tawi Chai. That's exactly what Tawi Chai needs to do. Just push forward. Yeah. Of course, if you are pushing forward, you're well in range for someone as tall. Or if he is pushing back, he's also in range as well. Yeah, it's <laughs> big problems. When you're fighting someone like Dal Sim from Street Fighter. Right hand there through the guard from Tawi Chai. Good start to the round here. Yeah, despite being on the back foot, he is hitting the mark. He is hitting the target. Back into the click tree, go somewhere. You'd expect Tawi Chai to, or excuse me, Gompatu to feel very comfortable in. I want to say a lazy start to the round for Kompatum. I think a, a little bit for start. both. Yeah, slow start right now. You know, with his stature, if he has got the skills, I'm telling you, the Thai fight management will be looking at this boy. With a big right hand there from Tawi Chai. Yeah, I mean, 73 kilograms. We do have tournaments for, for that. I don't think anything's ongoing at the moment. Tempted left elbow by Kompatum, but very slow. That one a little bit more faster within the clinch. Good knee there by Kompatom. And again with that right knee. Oh, just really softening up the midsection of, to of Tui Chai. Making it look too easy so far, though, for Kompatom. Mm. Kompatom, excuse me. Uppercut there by Tui Chai. Good right hand there. Two right hands connecting. But then again. It is the knees from Dong Patum, which, which are really scoring the points, I must say. Yeah, I mean, Tawi Chai has had a little bit of success with those right hands. But like you said, mainly those knees will be scoring in the eyes of the judges in round number one from Kong Patum. I am a little bit surprised that Kong Patum is allowing Tawi Chai to get that close. To close that just to make it so easy for him to throw that right hand. Yeah, I think he's just basing him into the, the clinch, really. That's probably where he feels the strongest as well. So I'd imagine... <laughs> With a stature like that, that's exactly where he wants to be. Hence, why well, you don't see him throwing much teeps. The difference is though, Kevin, this might be his first time fighting Kha Chuk and not using gloves, which is a big difference maker. End of round number one. Round number two, up next. round. Slow start there from Konkwatum, the taller of the two fighters, allowing Tawi Chai to move closer and close the, close the distance. So when he did, he could then do that and engage the clinch, clinch and uh, threw some good knees throughout that first round. Yeah, quite honestly, I don't see it going any other way but Konkwatum's way. I mean, those knees were just so accurate and did quite a bit of damage out of this second round I'd expect to we try to start moving forward start throwing harder bombs and at least try to put some combinations together because mm. so far what he's doing right now just isn't working but then again I can say the same for Kompatum that he needs to start yeah. pushing forward yeah I want to see I want to see a little bit more aggression but being honest from Kompatum well if he does want to come back here again that is yes exactly. has to be said yeah 
what he is doing right now at least. And as Tawi Chai closes the distance, Combatum's not willing to back off. There's that knee once again. Pinpoint accuracy by Combatum. He doesn't have to really throw that knee up that high to connect to the body. Yeah, but when it does connect, when he does throw them, I mean, you can see the effects it's, ha it's having on his opponent. That right knee to the left side of Tawi Chai's body getting marked up. He's throwing it at will, he's connecting every single time. Yeah, you can see him loading up that elbow as well. That's another thing to look out for when you're inside the clinch. Not only the knees, but the elbows, of course. Gone for though, not making this easy for Tobi Chai at all. Getting in close range. Good right. knee once again. He's struggling a lot now, Tobi Chai. Oh, that was a big right hand, and that's the risk. Right hands here from Tawi Chai. This is a good moment for him right now. And Kompatum's fighting back. Yeah, Kompatum, maybe not the wisest thing to do to exchange punches with Tawi Chai. I mean, Tawi Chai, he might be small in stature, but he packs a punch. And like I said at the end of round number one, with gloves, yes, you can run the risk of trying to close that distance. But with these ropes wrapped around your hands, that's right, I love, your really do it. I love your emphasis on the word distance. Yeah. That's exactly. Oh, once again, Kongpa Tummy's down due to the fact that Tawi Chai has come out of machine gun left and right. Has dropped Kongpa Tum here in round number two. That's right, I mean, Kongpa Tum, everything was going so well for him when he was clinching up, but when he started to exchange with his opponent, nothing is going right at the moment. Big problems here for Kongpa Tum. And David looks like he's about to have slayed Goliath. As Kompatum is down for a second time. The knees are non-existing at the moment. I don't think Kompatum knows where he is. Well, he's in the corner, somewhere where he doesn't want to be. I'm trying to throw the elbow, but just missing. I'm not sure he knows where he is at the moment. But that elbow connected though, well done to him. Taking a lot of shots and that is it. Wow, how about that? Exceptional by Tawi Chai. I think when many people saw those two get into the ring, they thought that Tawi Chai was on borrowed time, but no, like we said, like we keep talking about, with those ropes wrapped around your hand, if you throw, if you connect, anything can happen. And we saw that here today, the evidence of Card Chuck on full display here on Thai Fight League. Tum just decided to try to look for the knockout all of a sudden because his game plan was working. It was. Just wait for his opponent to come close, clinch up, throw the knee. But then, as the fight went on, he seems to have gotten overconfident, so to speak. And as you can see in the replay, paid the price for it significantly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's in round number one, he was in control. Like you said, we said, he started the, he started the fight so slow and then it wasn't him who upped his game, it was Tawi Chai. And in round number two, after he connected with a big right hand, he just went for the kill. He decided to go for it. And uh, he got his rewards. A knockdown victory, a knockout victory for Tawi Chai here on Thai Fight. Stay with us. Bout number four, up next. The winner by technical knockout is Black Corner to which I saw press up chalk. เอาละครับมาต่อกันนะครับกับความมันในรุ่นของซุปเปอร์ไฟท์มวยชายในพิกัดน้ำหนัก 73 กิโลกรัมครับสําหรับนักมวยไวท์คอร์เนอร์
สำหรับนักมวย Black Corner he's from k e t a w i w a t a n a จังหวัดกรุงเทพมหานคร please welcome เทพประบุตรมัดสั่งฉลามศึกสอขอเล็กทวีวัฒนามาต่อกันที่การแข่งขันของวันนี้ที่ในไทยฟุตบอลลีกและนี่คืออีกหนึ่งสู้ฟุตบอลที่73กิโลกรัมฉันคิดว่าจะยาวนานกว่าในที่ล่าสุดที่เราได้พบกันฉันมีสองสู้ฟุตบอลที่ได้รับการสนับสนุนจากผู้ชายที่ไปที่ระยะห่างและในที่สุดที่เราได้รับการสนับสนุนจากผู้ชายที่ไปที่ระยะห่างและในที่สุดที่เราได้รับการสนับสนุนจากผู้ชายที่ไปที่ระยะห่างและในที่สุดที่เราได้รับการสนับสนุนจากผู้ชายที่ไปที่ระยะห่างและในที่สุดที่เราได้รับการสนับสนุนจากผู้ชายที่ไปที่ระยะห่างและในที่สุดที่เราได้รับการสนับสนุนจากผู้ Pet Burapa Kiathakko, 25 years of age from Trat Province here in Thailand. He stands at 180 centimeters and has a professional record, a very very good professional record of 70 fights, 65 victories, four losses and one draw. And there is his opponent fighting in the black corner. He goes by the name of Chalan Sup Sokolik Tawi Watana. His real name is Tosapong Sikap. 27 years of age, 177 centimeters tall, from Bangkok City, Thailand. He has a total of 110 fights, 75 victories, and 35 losses. We don't get much fighters competing from Bangkok City, Thailand. No, we don't. No, we don't. Interesting to see how uh, Chalam Suk represents Krung Tep. All right, here we go with the tail of the tape for this one. You see that 110 fights. As opposed to Pet Burapa's 70, could that play a part in that? But you've got to appreciate the fact that Pet Burapa has 65 victories from 70 fights. That's very impressive for the 25-year-old. Here you can see the fighters performing the Y crew, which is done before every traditional Muay Thai bout, and indeed Muay Thai card chirk bout. None of their fighters, masters, their trainers, and of course. The gym or cup they fight out of and represent. So referee in charge there is Yong Yut of Hai So. Judges ringside, Arun Kumbudachat. Patanan Hongsapan and Tawon Yang Ubon. Now these super fights, quite honestly, really intrigue me. I mean, as we... Oh no, Thai Fight League, we try to find the fighters that are competing in the provinces, in the regions outside of Bangkok. And we bring them here to Bangkok City, Thailand for a big opportunity. Indeed we do. And quite honestly, I think um, the plan has been working so far. Much better than anyone could have believed, to be honest. Like you said, these fighters not always well known. And the, uh, Not the well known, but they do make a name for themselves here, that's for sure. Yeah, and many have taken the opportunity to make a name for themselves. In fact, how many fighters now from Thai Fight League actually compete on the big Thai fight? Doing a very good job as well. Good kick there. Oh! Not sure if that was a right hand or a right elbow. But down goes Pet Burapa. It was a combination served on one plate. <laughs> The shock in the eyes there of Pet Burapa. Yeah, Pet Burapa probably feeling the effects of Kachuk for the first time. Yeah, and it stunned him. But He's there within the clinch. We've seen it time and time again where someone gets knocked down in the first round and ends up winning by knockout in the later rounds. Very Could true. that be the same for Pet Burapa? Oh, another big right hand coming in there by Chalam Suk. And once again, Pet Burapa looking stunned here in round number one. Yeah, he was on wobbly legs for a while, but seems to have gained his composure. Let's see how long that lasts. Because i got to say, Shalab still doing a tremendous job so far. He is, and he's taking his time with it as well. Didn't take him long to get used to the Kachuk at all. As for Pet Borapa, his corner telling him to move forward. 
doing that right now with the knees. Good knee to the midsection there from Pitbull Pa. Sure that Chalam so wants to separate. He doesn't want to be in that clinch because he knows that his hands are really starting to pay dividends for him now. There again, you can see Bet Purapah looking for that clinch, and trying to frustrate Chalamsuk. And partially survive as well, I would suggest. That's why, I mean, Pet Purapah, though, not looking all that confident whatsoever. On the back foot. Oh, another big swing in right hand coming in from Chalamsuk. Good covering up, though, that time by Pet Purapah. Pet Purapah, there's no doubt about it, still adjusting to the Thai Fight League format, and especially. Those ropes. Big right hand there from Chalam Suk. This time targeting the body of Pet Burapa. Which we always appreciate, don't we, Kevin? When we see fighters not just headhunting, but targeting the body as well. Yeah, I mean, we say a week in a week out, and we try to tell Nongo that as well every time we see him. <laughs> End of round one. Here on at Thai Fight League. Do not go anywhere. Round two up next. Second round of action for our fourth bout of the evening. It is Chalamsuk. Sokolik Tawi Watana taking on Petbur Pakit Hako. And that was the knockdown that we saw in the first round. Seems like Chalamsuk style is just a little bit too much for Petbur at the moment. Petbur favoring his clinch and knee tactics, but at times, I mean, he just doesn't look confident in there at all, Aaron. No, absolutely. Defending with gloves on is a completely different than defending with those ropes. And I feel like that Pet Purapa was shocked and surprised that Chalam Suk was able to get through his defense so easily in that round. So he's going to have to learn. He's going to have to learn pretty quickly now to cover up. Let's see if his corner have told him something oh. significant. Good, Good right kick. kick. Yeah, indeed, to the midsection there by Pet Purapa. But again, he's constantly standing against the ropes. Just waiting for Chalam Suk. I'm not sure if that's smart or not. I mean, it's fair to say that Pet Burupa, he is a Muay Cow fighter, a clinch and knee fighter. and Yeah, without a doubt. Left high kick. Usually the game plan for that is to take some, to give some. Yes. But I think he's taking a little bit too much rope at the moment. And I feel like we saw that with Confortum, the dangers of allowing your opponent to get close. Because it doesn't take much punishment with those rope hands to cause big issues. Right hand there from Bet Purapa. Bet Purapa now on the ropes once again. Not a good position for him. Oh, nice. Oh, big right hand there from Bet Purapa, but then he eats one himself. Probably the best shot that Bet Purapa has thrown all fight. A nice knee to the midsection. Seems like just for a moment that Chalamsuk is slowing oh, down. Sneaky right jump there. Robert Burapar as he switches stances momentarily. It was very nice. And very different. Never seen that before. And bad signs for Shalamsuk at the moment. He's looking tired. Not doing anything really in the clinch. But a good sweep there. Maybe he's gaining his composure once again. No, I think you're right. I think Shalamsuk, he's starting to slow down. He's starting to tire. And there that's that sneaky technique once again. Switching stance and then throwing that jab. And this is the moment where Pet Burapar needs to take advantage of the fight. His cornerman telling him to do exactly just that. Good knee to the midsection once again from Pet Burapa. This is a good round from Pet Burapa. Of course, let's not forget, just because there was a knockdown 
in round number one. It doesn't automatically mean on tie fight rules that it's a 10-8 round. It will be a 10-9 victory no for Chala Amso. But if Pep Barapa wins the round, we'll be even going into round number three. That's right, but at the moment it seems like Pet Burupai just giving his opponent way too much time to recover. Good kick to the midsection there for Pet Burupai again. See Chalamsu, the aggressive fighter that we know from round number one, seems to have disappeared momentarily. And I believe you can see the markings on the body from those kicks and those knees starting to take his toll. His fatigue setting in now. Yeah, I believe so. Because we're not seeing that aggressive style again from Chalamsu. We're seeing a more defensive Shalamsuk, in fact. And not throwing much at all. No, he's not. Kicking at distance as well, showing a little bit too much respect. But the same can be said for Pet at the moment. Just looking to counter the shots coming in from Shalamsuk. Interesting round here on Thai Fight. Third of fun. off really aggressively in the first round where he managed to score a knockdown but in that second round just not doing enough and leaving himself open at times for Pet Borapa. Pet Borapa on the other hand did he do enough in that second round to win it I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it was definitely close but it's nice to see that Pet Borapa was asking questions of Chalam Suk that we didn't see anything of in round number one. They can see that right. <laughs> Very, very awkward for Chalamsuk to try and figure out. Very strange indeed. All right, it's made it interesting. Let's see what happens here in the third and final round. Yep, in the corner of Petburapa telling him that he needs to walk forward. Be the aggressor. I think he's trying to do that right now. I mean, if you're in the corner of Petburapa, all you would be saying is, do what you did in round number two, because that pretty much caused the majority of the issues for Chalamsuk. The switching of the stances, the knees delivering to the body, and the kicks from distance. And if you're in the corner of Chalamsuk, you're saying, fight how you fought in round number one. Be the aggressor. Go forward. Throw some punches. And quite honestly, I don't think Chalamsuk has much left in the tank, but That's that was a issue, good Kevin. right knee to the midsection, though. You're completely right, Kevin. The issue is... Chalamsuk looks tired after round number two. I think he just punched himself just now to wake himself up. <laughs> Seen it all now. See those long limbs of Pet Burupa now putting Chalamsuk on the back foot. Tapped it over there within the clinch from the man who got dropped in round number one. Let's not forget Pet Burupa. Good block there from Pet Burupa as he continues to move forward. There's that sneaky right hand once again. He loves that technique. He's connected with it three or four times as well. Right, shot to the body. Ah, one-two combination there. That's the old Chalam Suk that we know and love from round number one. Not quite there yet, Aaron. <laughs> Not quite there yet. Trying to get it out of him. Come on. Let's not just sit back. Let's go after it. Right kick to the body there. And again from Ben Burupa. Tempted uppercut that was wide of the mark for Chalam Suk. Yeah, Ben Burupa scoring some very easy points, I must say, with the kicks to the body. On the other hand though, Shalom Suk making it far too easy for him. Good team to the midsection from Pitbull Pa. Goes in again with the right hand and connects. He really does love that sharp right jab. Tempted elbow there from Pitbull Pa. I think he connected with a punch instead. 
All right, well, back to the center of the ring we go. Fin final, well, the closing stage of, so to say, of round number three now. And it's looking like, dare I say, Pat Burupa might have just flipped the script here after a fantastic opening round number one for Chalam. So Pat Burupa has managed to fight his way back into this fight and he's made it very competitive indeed. Yeah, Shalam Suk on the back foot a bit too much. Not sure the judge is going to score this, but I just can't see Shalam Suk getting this third round. That's a stalemate right now. Oh, good left hand there from Chalam Suk. Pet Burupa walking straight into that one. Chalam Suk now just throwing jabs, moving around the ring like he's already won the fight. Perhaps he knows something that we don't. Deep to the midsection by Pet Burapa. I think it's fair to say that both of them have emptied their gas yeah, tanks. Seems that way. End of the third and final round. Are we about to see a fourth? <laughs> Judge your scorecards. In the meantime, let's have a look at the highlights from that round. Let's see, both fighters looking for kicks to the midsection from distance. Lemso, maybe overconfident. Yeah, that could be fight. the case as well. Yeah, he was fighting like he'd won the fight already. There was that sneaky right hand where he was switching stances. And he caught him what, three or four times with that technique. Because as we know, I mean, in five round Muay Thai, if you score the knockdown, the fight is scored as a whole, so therefore you would win the fight. Yeah. The winner is... Black Corner! Chalamzik Sarkarlek Tui Watana! สำหรับนักมวย White Corner นักสู้ตัวแทนทีมอีสานใต้ที่จะขึ้นทำศึกในพิกัดน้ำหนัก 69 กิโลกรัม Please welcome กิติศักดิ์สิทธิ์ช่างเปาและเรามาดูกันว่าโฉมหน้านักสู้ตัวแทนจากภาคใต้จะมีใครกันบ้างเชิญชมครับตัวแทนจากภาคใต้เมืองทรัพย์เกียรติทรงฤทธิ์พระ
I agree. Introducing first in the white corner, Kitty Sak Sik Chang Bao, 27 years of age from Saraburi province here in Thailand, standing at 174 centimeters. He has a professional record of 68 fights, 52 victories, 16 losses with zero draws. And now introducing the fighter competing out of the black corner. Representing the southern team, Yod San Chai, Nayok E Tasala. His real name is Wanapat Tong Padit. 23 years of age, 182 centimeters tall from Nakhon Si Tamarat province. He has a total of 72 fights, 52 victories and 20 losses. And he was a former Thailand champion at 147 pounds. Hey, can you see the tail of the T? Tail of the T? Tail of the T. It should be called Tail of the T, actually, shouldn't it, Muay Thai? Yeah, like. <laughs> now that you said it. Never thought of it that way. I was just about to say you can see that the debutant, Yod Sen Chai, is the taller of the two fighters. Standing eight centimeters taller, in fact, than Kitisak. The last time we saw Kitisak, unfortunately, he lost in the final of the Thai Fight League tournament to Warajak Lek due to a massive cut that he sustained in that fight. Referee in charge for this one is Pukit Pram Pryun, judge the ringside. Yong Yut Apai So, Kawan Ying Ubon and Patanan Pong Sa Pan. Yeah, fair to say, I don't really think, despite the cut, don't think Kirisak was hurt that badly at all. I think it didn't take him too long at all to get back to training. It feels no pain. But it's going to be a tough match for him today. As we said, Yot San Chai, a former Thailand champion at 147 pounds. Yeah, not only that, he's been fighting around middleweight, about 72.5 kilograms, so he's slimmed down to being this tournament 69 kilograms. That could be a massive advantage for him. Let's see how he comes, though, with the ropes wrapped around his hands. He's used to the three round format, but not used to the ropes. See, yeah, exactly. Kitty Sack targeting the legs straight away here. Attempted that big right hand. And it's fair to say that Kitty Sack, he's very much used to the ropes. <laughs> Absolutely. However, he is a slow starter. Can, the same can be said, though, for your Sanchai. Oh, swingy right hand there from Kitty Sack. Attempted right kick reply from Yot Sanchai. Oh, big uppercut there by Kitty Sack. Warning shot for Yot Senchai. Started well, Kitty Sack. I mean, you'd imagine how upset Kitty Sack was when he lost in that tournament final. But this time he has another opportunity to win a tournament. Oh, big elbow there. However, this time Kitty Sack, he needs to rely on his teammates as well. True. Who we'll be seeing here tonight. Oh, is there a cut? Over the right eye of Kitty Sack. There, there is. is. Oh no. Has it reopened the cut from his last fight? Another left elbow comes in there from Yod Senchai. Oh, attempted flying elbow there and a big right hand by Kitty Sack. Yeah, and again. Kitty Sack really getting to the zone right now. What we know from Kitty Sack is that you got to hurt him in the round, in the first round, in order for him to wake up. Indeed, you do. For some odd reason. <laughs> Another big right hand there from Kitty Sack. Not sure what the signs behind it is or anything like that. Muay Thai special. Yeah. Kitty Sack being the aggressor, but here comes Yonsen Chai. I gotta say, Kitty Sack becoming a little bit too predictable, throwing the same one two combinations again and again. But that wasn't predictable. However, Yonsen Chai saw it coming from a mile away. That was slick by Yonsen Chai, sweeping someone in midair. Right hand, but again, blocked. Yeah, it's a good technique from Yot San Chai, because let's be honest, no one really trains for it. No one really trains to sweep someone in midair. Good knee to the midsection there for Yot San Chai, and an elbow on top of that. Yot San Chai, dare I say, looking really good in there. Yes. Crisp strikes here by Yot San Chai. Oh, and again with that. Right elbow as Kitty Sack recklessly pushes forward. End of round number one here on Thai Fight League.
and try, in our opinion, Kevin. Yep. The Philly was just a little bit too slick, a little bit too fast at certain points in that fight for a very aggressive, very game a Kitty Sack. And in terms of damage, I mean, there's no doubt about it. You know, Sanchai won that first round. It's so accurate, so slick. Yeah. And I do say it often, you know, we're trying to... That was to beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
ปูซานปราสาทหินพิมายสำหรับนักมวย Black Corner ตัวแทนนักสู้จากทีมภาคใต้ Please welcome รักนรงชนรงศักเราไปกันต่อในสิบสองบทของวันนี้ที่นี่ในฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤดูฤด
All the scores are calibrated. The top four teams then move on to a semi-final structure, I guess you could call it. That's right, a knockout stage. A knockout stage, and then the two remaining teams will then fight off in a final. So we will lose two teams before we get, of course, to the semi-final stage. Yep, lots of regional pride at stake. Good Ooh. team there from Busan. Very nice. You can imagine how confident Busan is at the moment, especially after the previous fight that he had. Beautiful inside kick there by Ragnarong. And again, targeting the legs there of Busan. We have, Busan, we have seen Busan lose here on Thai Fight League before. I believe that was in a tournament, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it was. There's quite a lot of expectation on him for some reason. Do you feel that? Oh, well, of course. <laughs> Mainly because of his family exactly. legacy. Yeah. Having been Muay Thai legends. Ragnaron once again looking for those low kicks and then shoots in that right hand to the body of Busan. Yeah, it's always tough for someone who's coming from the Muay Thai lineage like Busan. You're always expected to sort of be somewhere there. Oh, big right hand there by Ragnaron. Performing very well here in round number one. And yeah, let's not forget, like, anytime he gets interviewed, questions about his family will oh, always yes. come up. Uh, statue of his grandfather in P. Mai. Could, um, could imagine that would get a little bit annoying from time to time, though. And was it, is it, is it his father? Yep. Is he, was it a got bronze medalist? Well, that's why he's known as Busan. In Busan, in South Korea, yes. That's right. But that was boxing, not Muay Thai. Oh, yeah, quite the lineage. Yeah, back then when you defeated all the Muay Thai opponents, you had to go international somehow, and there wasn't really any international promotion back then. So then that's why a lot of people just moved to boxing. Good knee there to the midsection. By Ragnar Rong. End of round number one here on Thai Fight League. Stay with us. round between the two. Busan using a lot of sidesteps, trying to be slick, trying to get out of the way. Very defensive though from Busan. Ragnarong on the other hand, just trying to deal with the reach of Busan in that first round. Yeah, some good shots to the body by Ragnarong. That was a nice... But like you said, a slow start to round number one. We're hoping for more action now in round number two. I know a lot of people don't like this, but in my opinion, I'd probably give it a 10-10. <laughs> okay. I would probably just edge it to Ragnarong. What do you think, people watching around the world on the Thai Fight International YouTube channel? Black Ragnarong, Busan in the white left kick there. Good left hand by Busan. Tempted high kick there by Busan. 
Ragnarok going back to the body or attempting to go back to the body. Good movement by Busan on the back foot. There's that left kick by Busan once again. Yeah, what I like about Busan is that most of the time when he's competing, he is the taller fighter, but he knows how to use that reach to his advantage. We've seen some taller fights, fighters already earlier tonight, and a lot of them just don't know how to use it. Like, for instance, we saw Pet Burapa losing, we saw Don Patum yeah, losing as well. Very true. Busan, on the other hand, he knows exactly what he's doing in there. Good oh, block. Was, yeah, beautiful. That would have hurt Ragnarok. He's already on the back foot from that. Momentarily, at least. I think that's the most pain he felt all match. From a defensive oh, technique. Oh, going low now, Busan. And let's be quite honest. I mean, it's quite rare that someone hurts their leg from a leg block here in Thailand. Very true. Did connect on the foot, though, instead of the shin. But yeah, you're right, Kevin. Very rarely happens. You see it in MMA a lot where a fighter blocks a kick and the other the opponent's leg snaps in half. It, like I said, it very rarely happens here in Thailand considering how many fights a week we have. Yeah, I think the last time it happened was actually over in Raja. Yeah, I remember on the knockout show. It wasn't a televised show, no, but nonetheless, it did happen. It, it, wasn't it wasn't to a tie? No, it wasn't, no. You're right. Good low kick. kick. Beautiful by Busan. Ragnarok going low or attempting to go low, but I'll tell you what, the defensive acumen of Busan is on point here tonight. He's not taking a lot of damage at all. Yeah, and I love the footwork as well. Just keeps Ragnarok guessing. Both of them in a little bit of a stalemate there, but I think it's just Ragnarok who isn't so confident to move forward. No, not like we saw him in the round number one. He doesn't really know to, he doesn't seem to know what to do against Busan at the moment. Yeah, anytime he steps forward, he keeps receiving something. Nice left hand, then a right uppercut there by Busan. And you've got to love those low kicks as well, pinpoint accuracy. Busan floating around the ring. Good head movement there by Busan, but Ragnarok still a threat with those left and right hacks. Right elbow! Just to say that, and down goes Busan! Busan, I don't think he's going to get up. He doesn't want to get up. My goodness, where did that come from? He was in such control and it's all over. The referees waved it off. Another knockout victory for Team South here on Thai Fight League. That is six points on the board for Team South. Yot Sanchai and Ragnarong getting it done. I it's mean, Busan was looking tremendous. Beautiful. Beautiful footwork going back in and out. And you can see Ragnarok is actually limping a little bit, I do believe, from that block. But all of a sudden, he found, was it a left hand or a left elbow? I think it was a left elbow. Right? Either way, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the <laughs> face. And that's exactly what happened in that second round. Yeah, we'll have to see highlights of what actually happened. It's happened so fast. Like I said, I wasn't sure if it was a left hand or a left elbow. It got the job done. So elbow there that was blocked. But that elbow probably connected right elbow, to the I'm temple, sorry. yeah. yeah. Right elbow. Blue side his hand held high. It looked like he blocked it. There we go, pulling down the guard. He didn't even have to pull down the guard. Oh, just through the yeah, just over. Smacked right to the temple. Let's see it again. This is a better angle. I mean, it didn't look like it was that much, but believe me, you get caught. The winner by technical knockout is Black Corner, Ragnarong Chonarongsak. ละครับและตอนนี้กลับมาเราจะไปกันต่อแน่นอนนะครับบอกเลยว่าวันนี้เดือดจริงๆและคู่ต่อไปนี้ยังเป็นการพบกันระหว่างทีมจากภาคใต
นักสู้ตัวแทนทีมอีสานใต้ Please welcome เพชรเอกพัชระยิมและสำหรับนักมวย Black Corner นักสู้ตัวแทนจากทีมภาคใต้ Please welcome เมืองทรัพย์เกียรติทรงฤทธิ์Okay, everybody watching around the world on the Thai Fight International YouTube channel is now time for your main event of the evening, the seventh and final bout, Isuzu Thailand Championship. This time at 65 kilograms. Yes, it is the South taking on Lower Isan once again. So those three weights, we've got 69 kilograms, 67 kilograms, and 65 kilograms. Introducing first in the white corner, Pet Ek Pashara Jim. 19 years of age from Ratchaburi province here in Thailand, standing at 175 centimeters. He has a very good professional record of 53 fights, 49 victories, four losses with no draws. And now introducing that man right there, fighting out of the black corner. He goes by the name of Mung Sap Kiet Song Rit. His own name is Tirawat Petmatsi. 20 years of age, around 72 centimeters tall from Nakhon Si Tamarat province in the south. His total of 75 fights, 64 victories, 9 losses, and 2 draws. So the last time that we saw Pet Ek was actually on Thai fight week 31, two, two or three weeks ago. That's right, for those that uh, may not remember, he previously used the name Pet Ek Banrai Monta. And he won by a knockout against Heida. And free in charge is Yong Yut Apai So, judge the ringside, Tawan Ying Obon Arun Kumutachat, and Phuket Pram Prayun. They can see the legend that is Sayok Hom Pamawang removing the Hmong Kong of Pet Ek Pak Sharajim, as he's now known. And we have seen um, Mung Sap mainly around the five round circuit. That's honestly where he has the most success. He's tried three rounds a couple of times, but not so successful there. Left and right, attempted coming in there by Petnik. Let's see if Mung Sap can change his fortunes here tonight. And I believe this is his first time fighting Kachuk, but he has fought in four ounce gloves before. It's going to be a very, very difficult debut, to say the least, against someone of the caliber of Petnik. Oh, big swinging left hook to the body there by Petnik. My goodness, and you could tell Mung Sap felt all of that. Oh, better him than me. Right high kick there, attempted by Petek. Stepping knee. Petek looking to bring the fire here tonight on Thai Fight League. And look at that, those elbows. Yeah, Mugsab looking way too calm at the moment, Ooh. taking too many hard shots from Petek. And if he doesn't start fighting back, it's only a matter of time that he goes down. Petek in the mood here tonight, looking to. Finish just as his other teammates have finished with a knockout. Maybe he wants to do better than his teammates in finishing round number one instead of round number two. But quite honestly, Mung Sap looks like he just woke up from a oh, nap. Oh, right hand to the body there. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. And if he doesn't start fighting soon, it's, he will probably go back to his nap once again. <laughs> but as we know, five round fighters, if they do take their time. The step in elbow attempted there by Pet Ek. Mung Sap trying to get back there with a left hook and a right low kick. Probably the best shot he's had so far in this fight. But it's fair to say he's looking very calm, maybe perhaps a little bit too calm. So Pet Ek is in 
with the team of Busan who lost by knockout and Kitisak who also lost by knockout as well. Trying to restore some pride for Lower Isan. That low kick seems like it had an effect on Pet Ek. He's going to explore that option a little bit more. And again, left hand, right low kick by Pet Ek. Oh! Stop. Like you said, Kevin, you called it. Yeah. Looking for the uh, standing left leg, and once again, he's targeting it and finding it. Yeah, there's no doubt that lead leg of Pet Ek is hurt. A good right hand there connecting for Pet Ek. Oh, and digging again, once again into the body of Luxak. End of round number one. See highlights of round number one. A strong start to the round. That was probably Pet X's best shot of the fight, I believe. Yeah, by Pet X. He really took the fight to Mungsap and was looking to try and stop this fight as early as possible. <laughs> like I said, trying to restore some pride for Lower Risan, it seems. But I'll tell you what, Mungsap did quite a good job of covering up. And Oh, there, Kevin. Yeah, I mean, there were two significant strikes. It was the low kick by Monksap and Pet Egg with a body shot. And for those that want to update on Kitty Sack's condition, he just received 21 stitches. That is right, word. 21 I'm not, stitches. Can't say I'm surprised though. Same. Oof. It was not a good cut. Might be out of the tournament now, to be honest. I'm not sure he's going to recover from that. Oh, right hand there from Pet Egg. Once again, being the aggressor of the two, Monksap. Targeting that left leg. Ooh, sneaky left hand there. Nicely timed by Mungsap. Yeah, as we know from Mungsap, he is a slow starter. Seems to have woken up just a little bit more in this round, but Ooh. a good low kick there from Pet Ek. He put everything behind that one. No doubt about that. He's still targeting that lead leg of Pet Ek. Jab there by Pet Ek. Nice. Again, showing a little bit more respect now to Mungsap. Being a little bit more cautious. Yeah, and he switched the leg just now. And switching back again. I don't know how to explain Bunksap's style. It just seems like he's on cruise control. That's <laughs> it's true. Oh! Kicks to the body, left and right hand attempted by Bunksap, but not finding. Pet Ek, unfortunately for him. But he's being more aggressive right now as he targets the leg once again of Pet Ek, who Pet Ek moves in with a left elbow. I gotta say, there's no one with a better poker face in Muay Thai than Mungsap. <laughs> exactly. Every shot he receives, there's no change in facial expression. Oh, right hand there. Petek not really doing a good job of blocking those long kicks. Oh, oh, right hand over the top as Mungsap once again goes back to the leg. I mean, he starts, he wants to find some punches. He can't find them. So then he goes straight back to the legs, which he can find. But you can see he's desperate to add some punches in. I remember seeing, I remember meeting Pet Ek right before one of his fights. He had a mountain of rice. <laughs> Not sure how that works out. He's carb loading. There's no doubt about that. Another low kick there from Pet Ek. You see the swelling on that left leg, Kevin. And Pet Ek, oh! Locking it that time. It doesn't look good at all. Corner of 
Petek showing a little bit of worry at the moment. Good block there yeah, from Muxab. Elbows being slung right now. Spinning back fist there by Muxab. Right low kick to the body as well. There's a right hand. Finally, Muxab breaks character. About time as well. <laughs> showing a little bit more emotion. Where is this coming from? Muxab really digging in. And now really pressuring Petek. Yeah, putting him on the back foot. Who would have fought it after round number one? But there you have it. End of round number two here on Thai Fightland. There you can see highlights of round number two. Petek initially started well, started just like he did in round number one. There you can see a beautiful low kick by Petek. Trying to bring that fire, like I said, from round number one into round number two. But all of a sudden, Munksat started to find that lead left leg of Petek and he went to work on it. I think Munksat just realized where he was. <laughs> and started well, I, to wake up. You have to realize that maybe he was potentially down on the scorecards after round number one and he can't take that much punishment in, the, in round number two, otherwise it would have been open. At least in round number two, it gave the judges something to think of. You know what? I'm, I'm giving it 1-1, one, one, unofficially. Fine by me. It will be a very interesting round number three. Here we go. Lungsap again attacking <laughs> the lead leg of Petek. Makes sense. Not to Petek's liking at all. Big block there from Lungsap. Tempts it right kick to the midsection there. I believe that was a low kick. Was it? Oh. Yeah. Here comes Monksap once again. He's the one who's being the aggressor. He's pushing forward. And every opportunity, he's going after that leg. Oh. Left up there from Monksap. Good placement there from Monksap. Monksap now really applying the pressure on Petek. Petek throwing a few knees back. Big stabbing knee there. Big spear knee by Petek. But he also eats a left hook as well. Don't think it's having much effect though on Monksap who continues to pressure forward. Good midsection left hand there from Munsap. Yeah, and that hurt Petek. I don't care whether he patted it, gestured that it didn't hurt. No, that definitely did hurt him. Oh, tempted right hand there from Petek. Elbow strike, tempted knee. He's cornered right now. And you see Munsap gesturing Petek to move forward. Come and meet me, bro, he said. Didn't look good for Petek at all, I must say. Petek again on the back foot. Let's be honest, we're not used to seeing Petek no, no, no. on the back foot like this no. at all. Great showing from Monksap. We weren't saying the same thing in the first no, round. We Another kick to that compromised leg. And again, Monksap trying to corner Petek. Yeah, that left leg is hurt. You can see him switching stance at any given chance. Just like now. Oh, jumping knee to the midsection by Petek. Beautiful knee from Petek. Looks up once again, takes it like a champion. Still solid. stopping his prey. And Monksap now just getting frustrated, just telling Petek to move forward. He's probably telling, I've seen clips of you, boy. I've seen you move forward. Why are you moving back against me now? Attempts a left eye kick there from Petek. 
Oh, big right hand from Petek. Brooks Sapp says, no, didn't do anything. I think it did, though. I think it did as well. Yeah. Scored points. That's the most important thing, isn't it, really? Left hand there from Brooks Sapp. Again, looks for it. Can't find it. Finds that right kick to the body. And oh, the third and final round. We'll go to the judges' scorecards in your very entertaining main event. Petek in the white corner. Well, he started well. Did he do enough to take it from Monk Sap? Did Monk Sap do enough in... Petek, let's have a look at the highlights from that third and final round. Or third and potentially final round. I mean, we're not sure. Is there a fourth round? Oh, yeah, there is a round. Yes, uh, there is a final round. That's right. Is it? Yeah. We're, in the, we're in the tournament. I'll be here if you need me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, so frustration there from Monkstap. Petek already thought he did enough, I guess. That's, That's why right. he was moving away, frustrating Monkstap. We'll find out if indeed Petek did win this fight. And it put some points on the board for Lower Rissan. Let's find out, boys and girls. And once again, thank you for joining us. The winner is White Corner, Petek Hatcharagim.